Hello and welcome. Equilibrium of rigid bodies, and in particular for this particular uh, lesson, ladder. Ladder against the wall. Okay. Um, this is an exam um, question. It's, uh, it appears in one of my books as question one. It's a two-star question. It'll be a little bit difficult to actually read it and uh, uh, look at the diagram in detail. So I'm going to have to read it for you and obviously do the diagram. Starting with the diagram, of course, how big should the diagram be? Is the diagram important? Absolutely hugely important. I do advise my students to have a diagram uh, which is roughly half of an A4 page. So um, you will need to annotate this uh, particular diagram with a lot of uh, different stuff. So if you draw it very, very small, you'll be hardly able to see what is going on. So this is now the ladder against the wall. And I'm reading the question. Um, a ladder of length 2A. With this kind of problems, I tend to put the lengths at the very end. But I have taken this information in. Mass M, so it will have a weight. The weight normally acts at the midpoint if it's uniform. Is it uniform? Uh, by modeling the ladder as a uniform rod. So this is the weight. And the weight is, of course, mg. If it has mass m. Has one length a on a smooth horizontal ground. Smooth, no friction. But there will still be a normal reaction from the ground at right angles to the ground, r. And the other end, b, against a smooth vertical wall. No friction again. But there's going to be, again, a normal reaction at right angles to the surface, or the wall in this case. I don't want to put R1 and R2. I don't like it, so I'm going to call it capital N, N for normal reaction. Is there anything else, uh, man, a man trying to climb up or anything like that? The ladder is kept in equilibrium by horizontal force of magnitude a third mg acting at a point C on the ladder where the distance AC is half a as shown in the figure above. Okay, again, I recorded the distances in my head. I'm gonna mark them at the end. So what am I gonna do now with this particular force? I do not like pushing forces. So I'm gonna mark it as a pulling force. I'm gonna go in the opposite direction of the ladder and draw it as if it was somebody was underneath the ladder and pulling instead of being on the outside and pushing. And the magnitude of that is a third mg. Anything else, and that's of course half A, that's half A, and that's A, which of course I will deal with it at the very end. The angle between the ladder and the vertical wall is theta. I'm going to mark the angles in green, so this is theta now in the problem. Uh, show that the tan of theta must be equal to a half. This is not a given, it's a show. I'm just marking it there so I have a target, but be careful we don't use it in the problem. What's the next thing to do in a problem like that? The next thing is to decide where we're going to take moments. What does that mean? First of all, this type of problems have three equations. Balancing vertically, balancing horizontally, and taking moments about a suitable place. So this is the labeling that I'm using. I haven't write, written any equations. Let me move this question out of the way, and we can actually see what's going on. Uh, where do we take moments? We take moments about a place where it has loads of forces. So, for example, there was friction here as well. I will be taking moments definitely here because I will lose those two forces. Here is just one force in each place, so it hardly matters. Nevertheless, I'll take moments about this point A, and this was point B up here, and I'm going to mark it here. Now, as soon as I decide to take moments about A, I need to draw perpendiculars to the ladder from every other place where there is a force. So these are at right angles to the ladder. These dotted lines that I'm marking. Perpendicular to the ladder. Next thing, I need to mark an angle theta everywhere that I put a perpendicular on either side of the force. Careful, what does that mean? It means there's the force, there's the perpendicular. Theta or theta. Where is the theta in and out of those two places? Same thing, theta or theta. Theta or perhaps is on this side, okay? So let's move to the top one. If this is theta, this is 90 minus theta, right angle. And if it's 90 minus theta, it's theta here. Okay. Um, theta is definitely here on this particular picture because of course these are corresponding angles. You should be able to see it's exactly the same angle, just moved further down in the picture. And when you're looking at 
is theta here or theta here? Well, I think theta must be here because if you think about this triangle, I don't know if you can see it, the forces mark its sides practically. If this is theta, 90 degrees here, 90 minus theta here, and then we've got another right angle here. So if it's 90 minus theta here, your theta is on this side of your force. So angle task accomplished. Let's not forget the lengths. The lengths are, of course, here um, half A given. This is uniform, altogether 2A, so it's A to the halfway point, so it's also half A here, and therefore this is also A. I'm avoiding using arrows for this, it's going to make the picture very, very messy, and therefore uh, this is obvious. I use a lot of color coding in my diagrams. Uh, I don't think in an exam it will be a problem using colors in the diagram because the diagram usually for most boards, it doesn't get marked. Okay, so here is now the balancing. Forces up equal forces down. R is acting upwards, nothing else up, and therefore must be equal to the MG, which is pointing downwards. Forces pulling to the left equal forces pulling to the right. N acting to the right is equal to a third MG, acting to the left. Finally, the moments equation. This is now the difficult bit. And for this problem, I'm gonna use additional colors, trying to explain to you what is going on. This normally, when you're exam standard, you will not be marking. I'm going to split each of the forces, a third MG, MG, and N, into two components. And I'm gonna use a purple color pen for that. So I can split it to something there and something here. Same thing, one perpendicular to the ladder and one along the ladder. And the same thing, of course, with this. Now, this doesn't need splitting. This is where my pivot is. What does that actually mean? If you look at these purple forces here, the ones which are along the rod, these components, these have no moments because any force that goes through the pivot is line of action rather goes to the pivot has zero moment so the only forces that have moment is the component of n which is here which is at right angles the same way the component of mg which is at right angles is pulling me in an anti-clockwise direction there no moment for this one however this is at right angles this purple one and this is also working together with with this one so these two are pulling the ladder in this direction so now we need to form this moment's equation. Let's be careful and let's see what happens. This is the clockwise moment. It's turning the start to swing the ladder in this direction. What's the value of this particular force? Is n cos theta, because the theta is on the side of the component, that's a cos. n cos theta, that's force times distance from the pivot. So that is 2a equal because there's nothing else swinging me in this direction. These two components are pulling me in an anti-clockwise direction. So they work together. This component is mg. Is it sine or is it cos? There's no angle there, so that's the sine. The sine of theta. What's the distance from the pivot? This is, of course, half a plus half a times a. Plus, this one also works together with this component, a third mg a third mg. This one, is it the cos or is it the sine? The theta is on the side of the components, that's a cos. Cos theta times this distance from the pivot, and that's a half a. And now we have to tidy this up a little bit. So first of all, 2na cos theta equal to mga sine theta plus third times a half is a sixth mga cos theta. I've just noticed everything has an a. So let's get rid of it. Divide this a through. Wouldn't it be nice if there was, because this has mg, this has mg, but it doesn't have mg. But if you look at this equation, this silly equation up there, that has mg in it. So I can replace the two bracket. A third mg, that's my n, close bracket cos theta, is equal to mg sine theta plus one sixth mg cos theta. Now I can do exactly the same thing. mg, mg 
mg or cancelled. So I've got two thirds of cos theta is equal to the sine of theta plus one sixth cos theta. That's much nicer, but what am I trying to find? I'm actually trying to show that the tan of theta in this problem must be equal to a half. And I have lots of sines and causes. Very, very simple. I'm going to divide this equation by the cos of theta, or you can put cos and sines on separate sides. Up to you how you, you see this now. Um, me personally, I will divide the equation by the cos of theta. So that's going to give me two thirds. That's gone. Sine theta divided by cos theta will become a tan plus cos theta divided by cos theta is one sixth. And then lastly, tan theta on this side, two thirds take away a sixth is a half or tan theta is a half as required. Um, this is the end. I hope you followed what I've just done in there. I will continue with maybe one more, maybe two more lectures trying to actually show you what is going on. And for the time being, I'm signing out.